you know, one of the things we teach them is that we've got these incredible tools of computer-based music production, and we have these incredible sample libraries that a lot of which are emulations or recordings of real instruments, you know? Yes. So they're learning how to write sometimes without the benefit of having an actual sax section with them. They'll mm -hmm. do it in MIDI, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I was thinking it might actually yes. be great to, for them to hear you play a little alto, just maybe even a little demo yeah. on the alto. Sure. What the low range sounds like, what the mid range sounds like, what the upper range sounds like. Sure. Just as a that. little mini, right. you know, mini demo on the alto. What do you think? Yeah. Of that? The thing is, like writing in MIDI, like I know, like when I'm at school and my students are playing this, and like they say, "Gee, Greg, we got big band charts in MIDI." It's like, you know, you, you hear that after a while and you say, gee, I don't know if that's going to sound good. You know, I mean, you start doubting it. But then when the real instruments yeah. play it, and certain instruments sample better than others, you know? They sure do. You we know? always say that sax is one of the worst. Yeah. So, like, yeah. A, you know, MIDI sax, usually we always, what do we always say? Hire a sax player, right? Yeah. 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 Which yeah, is, it's you know, because you and me, we get to say that. That's right. Uh, you know, some of theirs just have the benefit of sampling better. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, still, even if you write a part in MIDI for a saxophone mm -hmm. and that's going to be played by a real person, mm -hmm. uh, even things like just getting the range correct, where the bottom of the horn is, where the top of the horn is, yes. uh, maybe you could play that and mm -hmm. then quickly write on the board, you know, where, where the range is for the alto. Okay, what you want me, to, want me to do that now? Write, write it first? Maybe so. Would okay. that be useful, you guys? Yeah. Just yeah. have the range of the alto? Yeah. So okay. I'll do I'll do concert. I I would probably be writing over there more, but I'll just do this right now. So, uh, so uh, so it'd be like uh, D flat. B, there's a D flat on the horn on the alto, and then come up to here. A flat here. And now now the alto is up a uh, major sixth transpose so this would be a this would be a, a B flat of course this would be an F so up here would be F on the horn but like for the alto what would that that would be like um, in transpose this would be treble clef this would be low B flat yeah and this would be like the F tie F so that's the range there so the, the thing with bass clef, uh, ladies and gentlemen, like with the bass clef, when I used to write the big band shots with the baritone, is written in bass clef. Uh, so if 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 the bass clef, just this is like just like one A right here, just a little. I'm gonna offshoot, but like um, if I was writing this, um, something like so. Say say it was like this. Uh, Like that, since since the baritone saxophone is also in E flat, okay, what we used to do is let's change the clef here like that. So this this becomes a B flat like it is, right? Now this note is an E natural, but it becomes a C sharp, and then this be, this G up a six would be an E. So here is the uh, G, and this is F becomes a D. This is um, a C again. Well, that's. Oh, it's an E. I'm sorry, C sharp. So I don't need I don't need the C sharp here. But sometimes because it's already in the bar. So, but what you do is put a courtesy sharp there, you know. Uh, and then this is a, a C becomes an A, and it's back. Just put that on. So, but I'll get the range of the sax. This low note. So D flat. So that would be this D flat on the piano be here. And it's the height. And then the, the F, the high F is. That would be this be the, so the range would be. So that would be, that would be like. So in the B, B flat scale. Uh, I wasn't gonna do this now, but I'm gonna say like the, the uh, harmonics usually on the saxophone are, you know. Now those notes there are, are these those notes I played last are above that, and that's called um, altissimo. 
higher notes above the highest range because uh, the uh, saxophone uh, on the E flat, uh, the, well, let me just explain the E flat, the alto, and the baritone, or, and the sopranino. The sopranino is uh, the smallest saxophone, and then there's the soprano. The soprano would be in B flat, and then the E flat, the uh, alto, and the tenor is in B flat. The baritone is in E flat, E flat. And I think that the uh, the bass the bass sax is in I think that is in e, uh, B flat if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, they play the same the same range. The the this this here on the uh, tenor, if the tenor would be D flat, it would be it would be um, this would be an E flat up a step, correct? The tenor would be up a step, and the alto is up a sixth. Uh, that's right. Yeah, the uh, the alto saxophone transposes up a major sixth. Yeah, but the, but the tenor the tenor range is like eight. Yeah, comes the tenor, down here. tenor sax actually transposes up a major ninth, or yeah. a second. You, know, you can think of it as a second, but technically it's actually a ninth. So if I play a low B flat on the tenor, uh, it's it's sounding a major ninth above that. Okay. So the main takeaway I think for you guys is that even if you're writing with MIDI, you're writing for sax and you're writing for MIDI sax, you want to keep it in a playable range, right? Uh, especially if you're going to have a real, if you're going to have a real person doing it. Plus, you just want it to sound more realistic um, uh, as a MIDI part. Even if you're le leaving it as MIDI, you still want it to sound realistic. And if you're using a sampled sax, which you should do only only as and you can't find a great one like Greg. Um, like then, then keep it in the keep it in the good range, right? So even though low B flat is there, and then the high F is there in concert, yes. in concert pitch, uh, because it transposes up a major sixth. You know the high F is high, so don't don't write a whole bunch of crazy sixteenth note stuff up around high F. That's very difficult for us to do, okay? But you know we have a lot more facility in the middle range of the horn, right? Right. So like around here. You see the high notes are like the, that was going between uh, the E, the E and the F here. Uh, it's kind of I'm getting cluttered already, but I was going between this this note here and that note. That this would be the concert G, which is this note, and then the F. But like the altissimo, like on the saxophone, you know, it can be we can go the, the alternate fingerings can be. Like I use it in jazz when I'm playing, and it's in when you're playing in the moment, playing jazz is sort of like you're you're there, and you're not premeditating any type of action. It's like it's all in the moment, and that's what I become to play like that. So like it's it's really a joy to play, because I I feel like it's it's the most relaxing part of my day when I'm playing jazz, you know, and because I, I forget about everything else, and I have to just feel something come in. It just it's, it's wonderful. Uh, so, but the, the this thing here could be a problem. But the high the high F, but so the, then the, uh, the it would be like F sharp would be in G G sharp A B flat B C E and then F I'd F. Now, see that goes. That's an octave above. That's impressive. Of the, up there. Yeah. Then the thing is, listen. Now, I'm not gonna. This, this, I don't usually play it, but I can play up there. But um, those notes, if I play the high C and overblow that, let me see. I'll do that. Do. You can you can overblow those high notes and, and get a, a. It's a fifth, I think. It went up to. No, it's a third. You know, like that. So that's like three, that's like four octaves above. Yeah. Don't write anything up there. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. no. Only, that's only for the extremely advanced players like Greg. And, okay? and sometimes it happens where you just play in a tune and you might just hit Oh, yeah. That, you know. For improvisation, for sure. <laughs>
forever with that. Nice. You know, nice. Yeah. Thanks, Jamil. So that's like the range. I think I covered most of the written range. But I didn't go up there, but I say. <laughs> the high notes too when you and the, it's effective to be uh, to be musical is the main goal like if I was playing with a, a rhythm section uh, they would be playing and I would hear the, be responding to the way the piano player comps and the bass player is walking in the time of the drummer in the whole interaction interaction and like that causes like the effect of the improviser being able to have freedom to like paint on top of that sound you know, and make lines come out. Like, so if I, oh, I feel like I'm plugged in, but I'm not. No, you're not. You're, you're free. Yeah. Like, if I went here and I did this, let me just, let me see. Wow. Let's see. Here's a like, C major 7 chord. Between the C and the D is just this effect. I'm just playing random chords. You hear? like messing with the changes and like just going through chord progressions and uh, any questions would it be helpful if you had someone to comp? yeah that would be can I try? Can I try? yeah yeah you got, we're gonna have to write some chords down though oh, I, okay. hi I'm Greg hi, I'm awesome. nice to meet you so so I can write the chords down and but I want to answer any questions about what we just did so far any questions not yet. Okay. Not yet. If I can make a suggestion, yes. I think, thanks Austin for stepping up. Maybe we can, you know, if you tell Austin a couple of chords to play or even a two chord oh, sequence, okay. you know, he, he can probably do that for you. We'll tell you what the voicings are. But oh, in right. addition, I sure. think, I'm guessing that what you guys might be interested to know is well, those chords, they sound like jazz chords, right? Right? Those sound different than the kinds of chords that, you know, you hear when you're listening to classical harmony, for example, or a symphony recording, right? A little different. So why is it that those chords that Greg was playing, why do those chords sound different? What is it about those chords that make them sound different, right? Does anyone know? Anyone who would take a guess? Because the they're what? Extended. Extended chords? And the, well, the sustain pedal only has a little bit to do with it, but it's, it's, it's partly a factor. Yeah. It's more about the construction of the chords, and you're on the right track, because these are Typically, um, you know, chords that are triad based yeah. sound pretty basic, and you can do a lot of amazing things with just triads, right? But one of the defining characteristics, I think, of jazz harmony is the sevenths. Is the sevenths, and, and then, then even the extensions beyond yeah, that, because extensions. some of those voicings are what you're playing there. Right. Maybe you could even illustrate one or two of those chords yeah. and write them out so that everyone can see. How sure. about that? And uh, one thing about the piano players, like when I play with, like the, the changes. Like it's so everybody's different. The voicings uh, they're so like inf infinitely possible like uh, to change. And so when I'm playing my changes and I'm writing like I play changes that sound pretty decent, you know that they, they work. But then I'll play I'll give the a real piano player my stuff, my music, and I'm and like like I just recorded last week a new album. It's live. It was like I played I played all the horns. So I played flute and I played the baritone, soprano, and tenor in alto. 
and I wrote all these tunes, and and I said, you guys brought my tunes alive. You made them like you know, brought them up. They just they're just like there, you know. The voicings, like my major seven voicing, is pretty good, but like. I said, how do you do that? How do you make that sound so good, you know? You know, it's like different. So uh, should I write something on the board, for a, a sequence? If you'd like to. Yeah, just yeah. Here, well, I think I'd rather write it down so we can have it. So this, is, this can go all parallel, which is like, like a, composing a, a, short comp, a short eight bar phrase of something that I can do, and I can write a melody, in which it's gonna be fresh. I'm not doing anything that I prepared, because I. I don't usually, I never do that really. And I go to different schools and high schools and talk and I just like to see what, where the students are musically and then we just go from there. But since you're interested in this harmony, can I erase this now? Yeah. yeah. The range, okay. So I just do a, a, like maybe something like a, what key should we do? Um, we can stay in C. We'll stay in C? I mean, whatever. Okay. Um, Actually, no. what are good what are good keys for the saxophone? I guess. Like. Well, for me, I like uh, I like all the keys except like maybe B, and uh -huh. in, a, in a F sharp. So, but what are? In I I like I like the keys B on the horn, like it would be D on the on the piano, mm -hmm. but like for me to be in an F sharp, it's like E flat, but on the key of E, it puts me in C sharp. You know what I mean? It's a little bit. So D on the piano is good. What was that? You said D on the piano is good? Yeah, D, D's good on the piano. Is D good for you? Yeah, sure. Major sevens and using sevens and stuff? Yeah. Okay, so. So if I put. Uh, okay, I'm just going to make. Uh, this, this triangle is an abbreviation for this M A J. Like that. So this, not, to get the, not to get confused with diminish, which is like that. Or, or a minus seven flat five, like this looks like this in jazz, like they'll use this half diminished because uh, the D minus seven flat five is like half diminished, but it has the seventh there, whereas the true diminished would be like all minor thirds like that, you know, minor third. So that's just that little theory, but so if I, I'm gonna write, um, let me just try, bum do da. I'll do a, let's do a, like a, a walking thing. Let's say, um, I just sang a rhythm. I went like this. I'll use that, that melody right now. I think it's a, can you play an A for me? Okay, that's it. Okay. Let me see. B. This is B to C. Ba -da -da. Right? Can I hear that? Yeah. Ba okay, wait. Ba -da -da -da. Now this sounds like a sequence. This sounds like it's a natural sequence. I think uh, if I'm playing da ba do da ba do da ba do da ba da ba 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 do da ba do da ba da da. So I get four bars already. Ba, ba, da, da, ba, da, ba, ba, da, ba, da, da, ba, da, 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 and then, this is me writing now. I'm having a good time. Ba, ba, do, da, ba, do, da, ba, da, da, ba, da, ba, do, da, ba, do, da, ba, da, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, be do da ba bo do da bo do ba do da bo day something like that for an eight bar phrase. But we haven't got the changes yet. But let's see. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna start. Can I have the say again? Ba, let's see, ba, is this a da, is that that note, da, yeah, ba, 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 All right, your training class. Ba, <laughs> ba, ba, da, ba, 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 Da, da, da.
B flat. B flat seven. Um. Uh, see, I mean, I mean, this is this is like sometimes chords do not have to go to its natural uh, resolution because chords can go um, like there's a rule like so one chord this would be like so in, in D seven and then. Um, then this chord, I want to go back. I'm going to use that D. I don't know if this is going to be good, but I, I'm going to use um, like here. Um, I'll use I'll use this at two five here. Okay, want to try that? Let's try it. Let's try it. Okay. Let's see if that sounds like. If you're not right, we can always put other chords on it. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> That, that the second chord is not happening. No, it's going to be. Can I hear? Can we start on the three. Well, you want me to? Start on the three. Can I just sit there for a minute? Yeah, of course. Let, let me see if I can get this chord. It's better if I. I like your chords. But <laughs> I just want to. This this one here. Uh, I think I think I'm going to do that F sharp B7 there and then to the E A. I don't know it's getting tricky. All right, I'll be throwing you a curveball. Oh, I'm ready. Like this. Where? Like this. So E minus seven. I mean, how about I mean, this could be one bar of E minor here, I think, right? And, and then, and then A seven, and then. And then D minus seven, E minus seven. G7, flat 9, flat 13. See, this is the flat 9, emphasize that. And then okay. C, C minor 7, F7, B flat. Now, in jazz, you know, you don't have to end, you don't have to always end on the key. If you, this, this key, can I hear this B flat major 7? Okay, and then right away D major. See, they say, it's like, so you get a, uh, you don't have any preparation, but if you wanted a preparation, you could go here, bum, one, two, three, A7, like, uh, with a, like this kind of. Yeah, but that, that's kind of like, you know, I, I like the surprise more. Yeah, I do too. Mm -hmm. right, we'll play this one now. See, this is the second set of changes. The first one didn't get off the ground too well. <laughs> one, two, three. Oh, see, now see. The thing is with the act, what you have to do, this note harmonizes to this chord, it's the anticipation. Uh -huh. So you gotta hit on the end of four, the F sharp minor. Okay. So ba -ba -do -da -ba -do -ba -ba -do -da. Now, 
ba ba do da ba do da F sharp minor B7. So well, you gotta hit the B7. Okay. I'll, I'll show you. Yeah. So you guys see what he's saying? He's saying that like even though we have our F sharp seven starting on the beginning of bar number two, in the jazz swing feel, he's asking Austin, who's playing piano, to anticipate the chord by half a beat by starting that note on, on the and of four in this bar. You see what yeah. I'm saying? So yeah. this is something you wouldn't take, you wouldn't bother to write this, like, you know, to overly complicate the chart, right. but it's understood in jazz. This would be new Right, and even for harmony, yeah. for the MIDI or whatever, if you're gonna write something like, you would harmonize these, these notes, you know, in this key, and then this, this is anticipated on here to this note, because anytime there's a rest, like if it's gonna be a downbeat there, if it's ba ba do da ba do ba di, if it was like on one, ba ba do da ba do do one da da da, but it's like da ba do da ba do ba ba do da, so like you would have that anticipation. So if I was to write, I would do this, like you have this be anticipated here, and then this would be anticipated here, this would be on the downbeat, this would be anticipated here, it would be like that, and this is like, on one. This one here is on one. This is here. And this is here. And this is here. So that so now, a lot of them are anticipated, aren't they? Yeah, there a lot of them are anticipated. And without that it doesn't it won't work unless you because the harmonies won't work, especially if you're writing it out. What do you think, Austin? Can you handle that? Let's try it. All right. Okay. One, two, three, four. No, it's not. You're right. You're right. I, ba, ba, dee, da. I need this. It's not frigid. It's going to be Dorian because it's a two five, and that F natural sounded like not in context. Could you play the E minor seven? Okay, E minor seven right now. Is it? Wait, do you want E minor seven? Well, yeah. What's E minor seven? I'm going to play the scale. And like the other, the frisian would be. See, that doesn't give give you uh, like it's not as bright for this tune. It's too dark for that measure. Just for that one note, it, it should be brighter. You know what I mean? So let's try it again with the F sharp there. Let's do it a little slower so we can hear the notes better. You know, one, two, one, two, three. I don't like the D minor. I think it's, I want B flat major seven here. I just changed, I want to see what that sounds like. Let me see. G seven flat nine? No, it's not. Yeah, um, yeah, that would work. B flat, it could be B flat. Uh, yeah, B flat major. How, can I have a B flat minus seven here? G seven. Uh, Want to try B flat minor here? No, what I was, what, what Bradley was was saying before about the te the chords, like just we could get this. But one example would be this, like, like we're talking about like the B flat minor seven, for example. Just to say, like, uh, you would have this chord, you have the minor seventh, which is like always the, the one, the flat at three, the fifth, and the flat at seven. Now, if you just play that chord uh, like it is. Now, if you put the ninth in. The eleventh and the thirteenth, the G. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the tune, the tune, so what, and tunes like that by Miles Davis he uses that that the the uh, the tensions like that, you know, because without that it would it wouldn't sound it wouldn't have that kind of tension sound. It would be just like just the basic. So that would be that. 
just get into this. Now, with a major chord, we'll say um, B flat major. Major sevens are one, three, five in natural seven, in natural nine. And if you want to use an 11, it has to be sharped, the sharp 11. So the E flat becomes E natural, and then you got the G. Sharp 11, seven, or his, this is nine. This is seven, five, three, one. Want to play that one? Yeah, let's see. Play this one. That sound. Then you're back to the minor again. Okay, let's try the tune. One, two, three. What didn't I change there, everyone? What didn't I change in that measure to make it work? Uh, the, oh, the notes are okay, but... Uh, is the sixth uh, interval there? Or is that interval there? That interval. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That should be minor, D minor. flat. Yeah. Right, I didn't change it from the yeah, B flat major. Yeah. Okay, that's going to make... What a clam that was. <laughs> what a clam. A clam. <laughs> <laughs> Try... Is that B flat minor 7? One, two, three. Uh, Sorry, I went off. Uh, I see it right from here. Uh -huh. That's major seven. Oh, major seven. Okay. One more time. Right. Yeah. It's kind of sort of a basic thing. Ba, 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 ba. Now, if I if I use uh, a tension here, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to put like a uh, flat thirteen. This is like a six of F of F, right? The six equals thirteen in jazz tension. Like this is like the sixth of uh, of the B flat. No, where am I? This this is the sixth. Excuse me, the thirteen is a six in the chord. So Greg, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Can you just for the benefit of the class, can you clarify the chord tones and the tension tones in that thirteen chord? Oh this one here? This one here. Oh, oh this, this this one here. Just so everyone's clear oh, oh, on the terminology sure. of okay. what tension means. Oh sure. This yeah. is the chord tones. I hear one th three, five and seven are always the chord tones. Anything after that, so the nine would be a tension. Chop eleven is a tension, that's a tension. That's the, that's the term they, they taught us at Berkeley, tension, and like, I don't know if tension or enhancement. It. I like enhancement. That's right. Yeah, but it, a lot of times it's helpful if, because we often uh, notate in the chord, we'll, you know, chord tone will be one, three, five, seven maybe. But then if we were talking about chords above that, we'll use the letter T for tension tone. And tension is what we're talking about that gives these rich chords their jazz-like appeal. You guys all follow that? Everybody with me? Okay. Now, thanks, Brad. Yeah. Now, now, the tension of this one was a, this is actually a tension with the D natural is a 13. If we play this, uh, this measure here, just, let's just show, ba, ba, these, just these two notes, C minor 7 and F7. And I'll play the D on both, not the D flat. I'll take that out right now. One, two, three. Okay, now, I thought when I was there listening to this, I thought maybe to make it a little bit more enhanced, I, I used the flat 13, flat 6, like, can you play that voicing? Yeah, let's try that. One, two, three. Yeah, but I don't like this coming from there because usually sometimes the flat 13, the flat, uh, flat tensions, uh, it's, it, it wants to go to, to minor. This sounds a little bit, a little bit better to me in having that B flat, B flat minor, I'll put minor nine. When you have uh, the minor nine in the chord, it's, it's, assumed, it's assumed that the seven is underneath it. You don't have to write it because... Oh, that's a good tip. You know what I mean? Not everyone might know that. Can you say that again? Yeah. If you see, a two, uh, see this like a, like a C nine, that's not a major seven. 
the C, this would be a C major, C major 7, C major 7, uh, C major 9, I'm sorry. That would be like a C major 7. Is, the 7 is always under the ninth. So instead of writing this, you just assume the 7 is there. You know what I mean? A lot of people get mixed up with this sound and that sound. So I always put major next to that because my students like will be playing and they'll play a major nine there and it's dominant, you know, it's it, it's not it can't be. But the reason I get back to this, uh, if I if I'm did I go through that okay with that with that yeah. explanation? I think so. You guys got it. Anybody have a question about that? Nine with the parentheses is a major seven, right? No, no, no. No, this is dominant. The, the one underneath it. This is a dominant. That's dominant. Yeah, yeah. Like this would be this chord, right? Instead of, instead of you put like add nine, C seven add nine, it's just like C C nine. No, the no the thing is though, if I wanted to have that and I wanted to have the sharp eleven on it, I would put sharp eleven on top like that. Yeah, that because that would not just saying nine doesn't mean that the sharp eleven is there. But if the piano player is you know hip enough to know that that sounds good, unless unless it's a C seven. Um, C7 sus4 chord, what does that mean? There's no three. Where, 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 there's, there's no three. What's that? There's no three. No three, right. These chords are great because you could also have a sus chord with a flat nine on it. Try that one out. Yeah, that's nice. That's a, that's no, a jazz chord. Yeah, definitely. No doubt. Now, this, now, the reason I like the B-flat minor here is I'm thinking that going from this tonality in a minor key and then, and then up a major, third to major, you give you that, that sound. Could, I just, could you just demonstrate B-flat minor 9? Uh, sure, yeah. No. And then to D major. Yeah, you, can you make that, that D major chord darker sounding? It's too bright. Okay. Uh, Lower red. Yeah, yeah. Could I sit there a minute and try that? Just to, let me see. I, I like what you're doing. I appreciate you helping me you out. Job, Austin. No, don't leave. Yeah, you're not, you're not done. <laughs> <laughs> you just got drafted. <laughs> Hear that? This is what I. This is what. I, Hear that? So let me play. Let me play. Now, if I did it in a Latin version, like, listen, listen to this, guys. That would be a different feel, right? But the swing... Can you show me, sorry, oh. can you show me your uh, D major 7? Oh. I'm putting, the, I'm putting the 6 in there. Uh, but this is a nice voicing here, look. And then you get out of the night. Okay. Open voicing. Um, now, if this was a swing thing, ah. you know that that type of thing on the bottom with the swing. But the Latin is the other thing where it's a little bit more, well, it's Latin, you know. It sounds straight eighths. So in swing, now if I play this in swing, you want? You got it, man. If I played swing, it would be like this. One, two, three. I'm sorry, I, I blew the melody. One, two, three. Now, in, in jazz, like, it's like when you're playing this, like, the tempo's not too fast. If, you, if you're playing hard, uh, uh, like, bebop at, like, quarter note equals 300, you can't play 
you can't play the swing feel like this because this you don't write this out. Um, this is how this is like the swing rhythm is this dotted quarter dotted eight sixteen. So it's like, oh, sorry, it's like. See like that. Uh, it's, it's like, but you you just assume that that you're playing that they look like even eighth notes, but. In Latin or you know, classical music, it would be like play like it would be play like this. This would be like want to do a Latin groove? Uh, sure. Want to check? One, two, three. Yeah, that's the idea. It's like I, I try to mess it up. No, it's good, Austin. Yeah. But still, when you're doing okay. Latin, you're still going to anticipate that. Okay. His mic. Okay. Greg, your mic fell off. we got to just grab your mic here. Oh, I apologize. That's okay. No. Where did it no. go? <clears throat> so what would you say characterizes Latin um, predominantly? Like what's the, when you say Latin, like what am I lacking on? Well, samba, bossa nova, like so, Brazilian. In terms of like oh, afro Cuban is different. Like, I'm not an expert at the claves, but it's like, but like, um, I, I usually... Uh, let me show you this bass line. It's like, um, let's see if you like, Like this. Can I jump in for a second, Greg? Yes, you may. So, guys, I just wanted to point out that, you know, Greg was illustrating the rhythm of the swing, you know, by showing you this. If you're writing this for real, you would never, you don't need to do that. That's just for this demo. You know, you just write it as regular eighth notes, and then you would indicate that it's to be played with swing, and then the player would interpret that. I just want to make sure everybody knows that. Okay? Yes, sir. So, in that uh, G, G7 flat Yes. Yeah, that that's not mixed so uh, where, no. where did it come from? How did you, how do you like decide that that's a good one to put in? Well, the melody is like outlined it, right? So, right. but this, um, th that's why I use that, but I could, I was going to use, I could use, I could use F, F minus seven there, B flat seven. Like, could I just ask, uh, I'm going to explain further on that, but if you played F minus seven for me. Play the G7 flat 9 flat 13. You're right. Now play D flat major 7. To the C minor. See that chord? Now, one, one, one thing from B flat minor to D flat major 7 to C minor. So I'm reharmonizing this chord with D flat. Yeah, right. 1, 2, 3. See, the difference in this chord could be like several choices. Um, it could be, I could make it like a, like a dominant chord with the same root, C7 altered, which is like an alt, when you see altered, altered implies that there could, is a flat 9, a sharp 9, or there's a flat, flat 13 in there, which gives you that, that sound. Like if you voiced an E flat, yeah, E flat, uh, E flat. I'm sorry, E, e B flat, E B flat, um, then uh, E flat, I'm sorry, A flat, E D flat. Hit that together. That chord there. Now that, those chords are really fun because they, they, they have a, a spectrum of overtones like that you can use like melodic minor jazz on this. All, uh, you, know, you can use the uh, super locrian or you could use diminished scale. Like if I were to play a diminished on a dominant chord for improvisation, you know, there's certain rules, but the basic rule is to go down a whole step, which would be what? 
a whole step from G. You play F diminished. So I'm going to play a whole uh, diminished scale on this. You play the G7, flat nine. No, well, you want the, the, the tensions in it, the flat nine. Flat nine, flat Yeah. So that, that gives you that one. That, but this, this three harmonies here that we changed, um, well, I had the, uh, we, we, we did this. I mean, uh, it had D flat major seven. That was three choices. I, this is a this is a, a, a five to two a five to two here. That's a, a good resolution. This is sort of like when you have a C seven like a dominant chord and dominant go into a minor chord with the same root. It's a kind of nice sound. Can you play this C seven? Mm-hmm. Well, you need a third in there too. The, is, a C7. is there a, is there a, is there a, a three in the E in there? E natural? Yeah. Yeah, and, and then, see that? It goes nicely. Now, I've got to say this about the G's, the dominant chords. Sometimes people use the tritone substitution chord. Does anybody know that, about that? Cool, right? Now, the tritone is what, what interval is an augmented four? Oh, I just said it. The tritone is like a weird tone, the tritone. You know, Star Trek or whatever. <laughs> is it the tritone. Here's the tritone. This, this is the augmented fourth, which contains the third and seventh of a, any dominant chord. Now, in G7, uh, the third and the seventh would be B and, and F. This would be the seven and the third. Now, the, the basic tritone sub is like, um, it's like it's an augmented fourth above uh, or diminished fifth. So this equals C sharp seven which is the dominant chord. And the C sharp seven has the B as the seventh and the E sharp or the F as the third. So it reverses, causing, causing this to have like a, this would be a C sharp seven going to that, you know, because that's the G seven. So if you play C sharp seven to C minor, let's hear that one. No, do we want to just? I started, sorry, I started Oh, you said okay. B minus seven. Okay, B flat minus seven. Oh, it's like B flat minor, then C sharp seven to C minor. Yeah. See, that's another possibility. Now, when when the chords are played, you hear it one time, and you say, "Well, that you're not hearing all the different possibilities all together. So whatever you come up with is going to be what it is. You know. So you." Like, I spent hours trying to figure this out. I would like to maybe put another set of chords on here to show another example of this particular example of music of eight bars. So <clears throat> should I, I'll erase this, and, uh, not the melody, just the, uh, the chords. Any questions on what we did? Am I, am I um, hitting home? One thing I, I'd like to point out, and maybe you can you, elaborate oh. on it, is how you started it. Uh-huh. You just had this rhythm. The rhythm. That was the catalyst. The notes, yeah. You, you mentioned the word sequence. Right. Which, you know, I'm not sure everybody you know, is really clear on that. So if you, oh. if you can maybe just say a few words on how it mm. kept going. I mean, you just had this little seed. That's, that's, that's a good way to put it. Thank you. And uh, what I did was I stood over here. I remember what happened. I, I sang a lick. I went da ba doo da. And I said, okay, that sounds good. I'll use the nice ask you for the A. Uh, and then I said, that sounds like a sequence. It sounds like something should follow here, over here. It just sounded like it would be good to do that same sequence again. But in, the, uh, in an event of, of, of a change due to, uh, I would think, well, gee, you know, it, sounds, it doesn't sound hip enough for me. I like to do something a little different. So, Ba ba da ba de ba do da, a different melody there. Instead of a rep- repetitious thing of that, it could be done um, for different notes. But for harmonically, um, if we we should play this one more time, and then uh, I should keep the changes there and write another set of changes, uh, just to show.
um, another harmony possibility. I hope I can come up with something that would be um, be worthwhile. Um, I, here it is. I got to think about this for a minute. So, so this is like, well, you know, what it, this outlines. Um, yes, yeah, like this. This could be like. Let me just like this E minor. Oh, I, I erased it. Oh, sorry. So this is the E minor nine. Can I hear that? This melody with that chord. I'm sorry, I don't know. E minor nine. This melody. I'll play the melody. Is that an E minor chord? E minor nine. Better. Yeah, that's better. That makes it. Hold on. This one here. I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna do F major seven here. But so. Ba, ba, da. Yeah, it might it might work. Um, ba, ba, da, da. Can I hear this chord? No, they're here. Just that one. No B seven. No, 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 no B seven. Yeah. So I, I'm gonna take. So starting it from the E minor to the F major seven, and then to the E minor. One, two, three. Oh, is this E minor nine? Oh, sorry. No, no, it, that's okay because nine is there. It's implied for the piano player that wants to play a hip chord. You put the nine in okay. because it's not conflicting really. Because that this this I'll play this note. You play the E minor nine, okay? <laughs> See that G is is a half step away from the nine, but it still sounds okay. Uh, the F sharp I'm playing. Yeah. Uh, he's playing the F sharp, and I'm playing the G, the E, the G. Sorry. <laughs> But I don't know. See, I took this chord out, so I'm reharmonizing this with this because I want this this uh, this Lydian sound here for the B natural on the F major chord. But I don't want you to play this chord. I just want to go from here to here, uh, and then. So you're slowing down the harmonic rhythm, and you're playing uh, a full bar of E minor nine, a full bar of F major seven, and then a full bar of E, ma e minor seven. E minor seven. Okay. Yeah. And then, and then and I'm going to use, use the tritone sub here, E flat seven instead of this. So we're going to have this. No, that's a uh, yeah dominant chord. Dominant, E flat seven. Uh, it will be a do, E flat G B flat. Yeah. Now you could put the, the ninth on that one too. The, yeah. So you have this one, this E minor F, and then E to E flat. One, two, three. Okay, all right, we'll do it again. One, two, three. Uh, C minor nine. F7 flat. Yeah. Okay. I like I like to change you know I I like to change this melody to have that nine on the melody. It sounds better to me. Ba da boo da da like that. So like, can we just try this melody right from here? Yeah, you know what I mean. Now this 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 goes. Now see this this part here. Play the B7 from or the F major seven. Now I'm, I'm going to play this. That's chromatic, and chromatic works on all all chords. 
It's just a matter of like saying, well, I've got the root here, and then I've got the major 7, flat 7, and then the 13th. Now, in, in the reason why this particular line works, um, uh, it's like the bebop scale in jazz is like if I have this, check this out, uh, uh, the B7, um, it'd be B mixolydian. Do, do, da, ba, B, ba, ba, ba. So like B7, here's the chord uh, tones. There's the, they put the major seven in between. You've heard this probably in jazz. Like, well, can we play this this chord here? The chord? Oh, uh. You hear that scale? I'll play this chord. It's like it sounds like a basic scale, but when you use it in jazz, it's like you know that type of sign. Yeah. Do you have a passing tone between the major seven and the and the root? Yeah. Or yeah, between the, major the seven, seven and the root? Okay. The major seven between the root and the flat seven is a chromatic note. So if I could just step in, what you're saying is the reason this works on the B7 is because it's related to this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in other words, at, for, at glance, you guys, you might think, well, wait a minute, my chord symbol says B7, so spell B7, B7. D sharp, F sharp, yep. A natural. Right, right here it is, right here. Okay, cool. Well, then, you know, some people, some might think, well, wait a minute, I, then I can't use an A flat or a B flat there, could I? You know? Well, but you, you, in a jazz context, you're kind of using them almost in a passing tone kind of way, where the melody is passing through the chord tones with adjacent half steps on either side. Do you guys all follow that? Yeah. Okay. And this is actually a chord tone in the, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a scale tone in, uh, here it is right here in the scale, the 13th, you there know, you go. but, the, the, but leaving this, this chord here from F major seven, can I hear the F major seven again? And then the B seven, the E minor, or just F major to E minor. You know, you got a choice there. One other thing I could say is, um, uh, this here, it's like this F major seven. Uh, it would be just be like this. This thing would be uh, uh, you can you can use the related two minus seven of the five chord. Like in other words, this is one two. This is accents here. So it means one ba ba ba. Yeah, you can do that too in a slower context of ballad writing. Maybe like this tempo, like. One, two, three. No, the, yeah. One, two, three, four. No, you're, you're late on that. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that you can do that. Any, any dominant chord, you can do that, even on this tritone sub. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Go, no, me. no, you. I just, I, I just want to make sure that everybody's tracking because he's moving pretty fast on some oh, of this stuff, am I right? Going too fast. Yeah. You're doing great. Okay. But thank can you. you just explain to everybody where you got this? Substitute? We're, oh. we're, we're taking this B7 chord yeah. and we're saying, huh, maybe it'll be more interesting if we uh, uh, insert something else instead. Tell them where you got F sharp minor seven and B7. Okay. It's yes. two five, but That's you right. gotta know where this comes from. You do, right? But the, uh, maybe uh, I'll explain where it comes from. But just briefly explain so the whole class. Yeah, so because in the modes, so this key will be like uh, you know F. I can't like the key of E, right? There's the modes. I mean, like it's the one, right? One E major seven, it's the F sharp minor seven Dorian, the G sharp Phrygian. This is the A Lydian, major seven, mm -hmm. B mixolydian. So here's the chord here, B mixolydian, B seven, and then the two is here, coming from the same key area. So you can, this is, a, this is, the, this is in the same uh, harmonic family. So that comes right. in there. This is why we're always telling you guys when you learn a new chord scale, to do the exercise of stacking the notes on top of each scale degree so you can see what that chord family is. <clears throat> this is like a chord family, right, in the key of E, right? right? 
we call I call it a family. I mean, it, you know, that's we, what I call it. Yeah, we call it a chord family. So um, it it means that any of the chords that you create here are options for as substitutions. You know, if you just have one, you can insert another from the same family to add what color, harmonic contrast, or interest, or, or, or root motion, or root motion. Yeah. Root motion. Now you get even more complicated with this. This is going to E minor here, B five to two, of another key. This is a key area. If I'm going to improvise, I'm going to play in the key of D. I'm not going to look at this. I look at that as a as a key area, you know. Like in a lot of bop tunes and rhythm changes, you've got like one six two five three six two five. It's all on the key. And then when you get to the bridge, you sh it goes up. To a ma uh, it goes up a, a, a major third to like uh, D seven in the key of B flat rhythm. It goes D seven for two bars, and then G seven two bars, C seven two bars, and then F seven for two bars. And in those eight bars, you're going in four different keys, and then. You, that, that bridge is complicated because you can use the two fives in the fives and you can use the two, um, two sub fives and then v vice uh, reverse it and you, you, can, you can go on. So I can explain later. Can I ask yeah. a question? Yeah. About that? So you, you, you're talking about a lot of theory in terms of the solos, but you're not yeah. thinking in theory when you're soloing, right? Uh, at this point, uh, I might take a glimpse at something and say, you know, I might, I might be thinking about something, but I won't necessarily premeditate it, you know. I usually play a lot by ear now, even though the, it's like the sounds are more like language, you know. But the, the only problem for me, in, in, in all honesty, is that my technique is pretty good, but I mean, it's still not good enough for me to do all the things I hear. So I have to like, I have to like sort of edit fast and say, am I going to be able to do that? And like, it's amazing how we think so fast, you know. So that's, does that answer your question there? Yes. That's so good. What are you saying, so you, you said that you can't do necessarily everything you hear, you can't replicate it perfectly by ear, but you can use theories or <coughs> scaffolding to get you there? Or? Well, I can do, if I hear something I, I want to play, I'm thinking ahead about where the line's going. It's hard to describe how jazz is played because unless you, you have something that you know you're going to play and it won't sound really real, um, you have to like uh, create the line and in, in make, make the, the flow happen. In, in that flow, you also have to play the right notes. You have to have the, um, to know where you're going to put the next note. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like weird. I'm thinking ahead all the time of the melody. It's like, it's really crazy to explain. Like if I were to improvise on a tune, maybe we got a lot of time, so I can do a lot of different things. I don't want to get, you know, confusing with everything all at once, but you know, we're, we're doing okay with this right now. I think. I think we're doing okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, it was, yeah well, I'll let the, I'll let the class. You know, do they. You should. You know, you yeah. guys. If you have questions or you know, you want to raise your hand or, or clarify a point, this is for you guys. So please raise your hands. Go ahead, right here. Okay, you would just go like this. Uh, say I want this one, right? And then you just write it out. Yeah, yeah. Like, you like if like play, it? play, play it. Play like a certain piece. <coughs> a certain, like, yeah. Oh sure. Okay. How about if I do? Um, I just do it as it's written. So there'll be four bars swing and four bars Latin. Okay? okay. Yeah. So what you're gonna go here to swing, uh, swing that, and then go down here. So let's use the bottom, the bottom changes from now, the ones that you're used to. Okay. Right. What's this swing? One, two, three. <laughs> The thing is, like, the bass line should be different on the Latin, so you can make that really apply. Yeah.
Yeah, so yeah, more more like a, a you know more interval movement instead of a walking line. Okay. Uh, is it so, yeah, as far as notation goes, to answer your question, uh, you know, if you're just it's all eighth notes on the page, but you want part of it to be swing and part of it to be straight, <clears throat> that's you just literally write the word. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Every once in a while, I've also seen people will sometimes write like in parentheses a little tiny eighth note equals you know a triplet figure. Uh, that's sometimes done. You like you, know, you say eighth note equals you know yeah. a triplet with the first two triplets tied yeah, together. Yeah, I'll show you first what that two looks notes. Like. That's that, that's like a shorthand for make this swung, and then yeah. like this, right, Brad? Uh, and then tie together the first two. Yeah. Ba, ba, da. Yeah, or, or like oh, so this. It's, it's, yeah, just tie those. Oh, together. that's right. This yeah. is, I'm doing it there. So in other words, this ba, is ba, saying, da. hey, play it just like this. Play it like ba, a swung eighth, da, a swung triplet. Da, that's da, swing. Da. Or straight would be, you know, um, quarter note equals eighth, eighth, with just a beam. But most uh, people who are reading charts, like, you know, Greg and I, or like reading, any horn player, Bruno, Alex, any of us that are reading music, if we see the word swing, we know what to do. If we see the word Latin, we know what to do. Yeah. I should. I wanted to uh, to do a bridge, but we think we, we should we do a bridge. Or well, let's make I... sure we got this covered and, and okay. it's clear. For Alex has a question. I just think this might be useful uh, to hear uh, the different uh, sounds of uh, two, five, and one, like an altered scale. And Okay. Maybe so. Yeah. I mean, I want the focus for to be for you guys to have, you know, some tools for composing in a jazz style. That's a tool to compose. Yeah. Those scales to use as a tool. That's what I'm so, sure. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, well, like for this part here, with the alt scale. That's exactly what I was supposed This to one here. Do they play something on that? Yeah. Like to kind of give us like a different taste of different scales that you would use. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I want to play the chord? Uh, yes. Which, Let me see. Which chord? This one, no, this one here. Okay. Yeah. This would be, I'll do an altered scale. Altered, like, they say. I played a wrong note. No, one more time. That's a G7? Uh, this would be this one here with the. Uh, that's the G7. Yeah, with the. Uh, oh, sorry, that's the five what, what note is that? F sharp? Uh, oh, that's the yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's one. Right here? Yeah, and then to hear what it sounds like to have a fixed melody and then hear you improvise and then go back to the fixed part. So we can get Okay, so I can part. I can improvise on all the chords actually. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? That would be all right. All right, sure. Okay. One, two, one, two, three. I I'll use the F sharp, right? We're gonna use the bottom chord? Yeah, okay, good. Thanks, man. You use the bottom ones. Yes. All right. Good job, Austin. I went to there too. All right. One, two, three. You rush the C minor. Okay. One. Just start the top again. One. Let's do it slower. One, two, one, two, there. Yeah, you're doing a good job. You just rushed this measure. Okay. Did you hear it? Did you hear yeah, it? Yeah, I heard, okay. I heard that. I heard that. And then, and then the, the actual composition itself, in, in contrast, it, I would say that the uh, harmonic 
harmonic movement is more deliberate and more uh, closer to the actual chords versus where you're going outside and when you're improvising, you're taking more risks, but then you're landing at the right places so mm -hmm. that we can be engaged by your in the moment stream of consciousness. Yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you. You know, and I'm thinking like tunes to the melody, like uh, I think getting into the solo section, it, it adds a whole different flavor once you start improvising on it. As long as the notes are right, or else it sounds really bad. Well, it sounded really good, though. Yeah. There's, but I would try another, another type of solo. Less notes, more rhythm, okay? And, and some space. One, two, one, two, three, four. Uh. Top, right? Oh. Where'd you go? I think I took too much time on the bottom. I had four beats for the uh, semi so Oh, that's what happened. Sorry. Do it again? Okay. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Are you using the F major? No, I was using F major. Yeah, sharp minor seven. Play it again. I, I don't want to take time. I just my, my made a mistake problem. Okay. One, two, three, four. Seven is a whole bar. Ah, okay. Fit the B flat minus seven, second line. Yeah. One, one more time from the top. Okay. One, two, three. Late, late on that. Oh. Okay. One, two, three, four. Yeah, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, ba, da, da. Okay, so. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. That's it. Okay. Uh, that's nice. Let's try that last four bars. One, two, three. Four. Now you rush, you rush the C again. Yeah. What I did there was I did a motif thing. I was I just I played that and then I said let me do that for the next bar, but I had to change the notes to the altered sound. I'll show it again. I'll go I'll, I'll do a descending line now just to, because I'm thinking of a, a pre you know premeditated line here. One in the B flat. One two three. You rush. You keep rushing the C minor. I'm rushing the C minor. Yeah. Okay. One. I anticipate though. Just anticipating. Yeah, but you, you can, you can, yeah, you're just rushing the, the anticipation. Okay. Well, see, you know, we'll, we'll try it again. Okay. One, two, three, four. <laughs> now you're at the top, right? Up top. Okay. Yeah. Good yeah. Good yeah. I like it. That's good. It's working out. You, you, you getting something from this? Yes, a lot. Oh, Thank great. You. Now let's let's do uh, some have some questions. Any, you have a question? Nothing. I have a question. Yes. Um, so Latin and swing. Is you just gonna find a rhythm difference? Any harmony? You know, you got some rhythm Latin. Uh, the, I mean in the solo. Like the harmony is there any harmony differences? In no. Solo? No. No. The harmonies stay the same. It's just the rhythm. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, more broadly speaking, if you want to get into like a musicology type analysis, if we analyze Latin music, you're going to see some different harmony than you will in swing music. I'm sorry. But I think in the context of this, no. The, harmony, the changes are the changes, you know? Um, and uh, how about this incredible melodic invention that we're hearing here? Is this incredible? It's so great. Thank I, you. I think that it's, it's inspiring um, from the standpoint also of composition to think about, you know, how you guys study voice leading in harmony class, 
um, how do we connect chords together you know, in composition. Um, when it comes to a jazz context, one of the beautiful things about that is that composition is like improvisation slowed down, right? So when you're deciding what to compose and how it's going to be forever, right? You're deciding something by having an inspirational moment. Maybe you're singing some of these melodic ideas like Greg is playing today. Or da ba do bu ba, ba ba da bu ba, ba ba da bu ba. Maybe maybe you like that figure or you like the way that it sounds. And then you can take that and transpose it and move it around and maybe even lay it over several different chords and find the sweet spot where like that third chord, if you just change that one chord, it becomes something else, right? So I, I, it's, as, again, bringing this conversation back to composition for a moment, um, the beautiful thing about jazz harmony is the color, right? All these beautiful tension tones and extensions of chords and things. Composition is improvisation slowed down, right? So when you're composing, don't be afraid to have an improvisatory spirit, have an improvising kind of spirit, and then you know, write it down, record it, you know, put it on your little voice app on your phone. You know, I had this amazing idea driving to work the other day, and I was like, don't crash, don't crash, don't crash. That's why I keep the, the, the you know, little music memo app like, on the front of my phone, and I just literally one note, and I'm recording. And I can go, da ba do boo ba, ba ba do boo ba, and then back to driving, right? And then later that night, I can go listen to it, and I can go, oh yeah, cool, maybe I can work with that, right? Sounds good, man. So certainly one of my goals for today in having uh, Mr. Abate here is to, is to increase your understanding of what makes jazz sound like jazz, right? So if anyone has questions related to that, you know, as we come into our last half hour or so here, um, uh, please ask away. I just wrote an improvisation on, on this stuff. See how this, this sounds guy. like. This guy. Are you kidding me? <laughs> See if this works. Yeah. So I'm incredible. thinking about I'm thinking about a sax soli, right? This would be the lead alto, but it looks like it could be a soprano part because it gets down kind of low. Well, it's not bad for the alto. Like, let's say this, this line here, transposed, this is concert, like piano, right? But it'd be like. That, that line, yeah, it's not bad. This line would be. Uh, see, I, 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 mm. I, I did this line with a, the F7 because I mentioned that you know, I used the diminished line on the F7, everyone, because I said, like, a step below the root, I did this, you know, kind of like design this purposely, this bar, to show you how the diminish. So this would be an F, F flat 9, but it, it arpeggiates the diminished chord of E flat diminished down, because you play a diminished scale a step below the root of a dominant. And so this is a perfect example, coming in from the ninth of, of the C minor, so that, that sound it's like from here, let's slowly. And this is B flat minor here. I, I like, um, well for me, my style of playing is I like to have the notes kind of like go to a place where, where it makes sense to me. And like, I, I like it when things lead into things. And uh, so this is like, I just wrote this now. I, I was just trying to sing something in my head. See, see that I, I'll play it without the piano for now. See, then with, with the chords, it be it should sound better. Want you out the chords? Yes. Oof. One, two, three, four. A7? A7? Yeah, A7. My fault. You know what I did here? I'm looking at this. But I, no, that's right. This uh, A7, mm -hmm. right? Can C I? sharp, C natural. Yeah. A, A7. 
Uh, it's gonna be, um, is it, uh, let's see, the voicing on the bottom is G, C sharp, F sharp, could you voice that? No, uh, an octave higher? Yeah, that voicing there with the B flat on it, say you put, no, on the, yeah, like that, no, listen. Uh, that's what I wanted, that sound there, you hear that? Okay. Yeah. And then resolves to B flat minor, B flat minor. Yeah, we gotta do it together so you get the effect of it. Uh, okay. uh, no, G F sh uh, uh, G C sharp F sharp. Yeah. B flat minor. Can we do it again? One, two, three. That's all right. That's all right. Let's see, this is, it's not really a solo, but it would be a soli, it would be what it is. It wouldn't be anything, um, like, like if, I, if I played this on a gig, if it was a tune and I played this what I wrote, it wouldn't be jazz, right? So, but I, I think it needs a bridge, but can we try this particular soli again with you comping? Yes, yes. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Pretty yeah. close. Yeah. Yeah. Voicing with the A7. Huh? Yeah. The voicing with the A7 is great. How do you justify the E flat in there? Uh, right here? Yeah. That? Oh, there's E flat 7 no, or the... No, the, the E flat, yeah. That. That's uh, sharp 11. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So, can I step in for a second? Yeah. I just want to point something out. Uh, this, you know, this incredible melodic invention and all the color that in the line that... that this genius just spontaneously <laughs> created on the fly. Part of the reason that it sounds that way, I mean, again, just to get back to chord and scale theory, on the surface it looks like a wrong note, you know, but it's really not. If you actually analyze it, it's actually an altered tension. In this yeah. case, uh, which, what was that, a sharp 11? Yeah. Yeah, a sharp 11 See. note. Great note, great note choice on a dominant 7 chord, right? Sharp 11 is always a great choice. Same note as, 11 is the same note as the what? This is it here. 4, that's right. 4 Just equals the, 11, 2 equals 9, 4 equals 11, 6 equals 13. G diminished right? on the A7, A. So this, see, the, the diminished chord, ladies and gentlemen, the A7, G diminished, so you've got, you say, was well, the chord in there? It is. I mean, you got the 1, and then you got the 3rd, but it, it, it hides itself as a, C, a D flat, and then you've got the 5th, uh, the and you've got the flat 7th. In the middle, you've got, like, a flat 9, You've got a sharp nine, then you've got a flat, uh, uh, a sharp eleven, and you've got a natural thirteen. So you get all those tensions in a diminished. Now to get the flat thirteen, when you have that, that was the one I was trying to explain. This would be with the F natural. So this one, oh, that's, it, that's really. That's like a, it would be like a, a B flat, uh, it would be um, an A, no, it's a B flat melodic minor scale, um, a half step above this. A B flat melodic minor scale gives you the altered scale of A. I think that, it's it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it gives you that. And then there's a harmonic minor thing that happens. When you have the A7, and it goes like this, it'll be a D harmonic minor scale is another one, but see, I'm playing up a fourth above the A7, the rule, but thinking about this when you're improvising, it's kind of crazy. That's why you think when you hear the chord, you, you, you're automatically, you know, in tune to all these different sounds that you've been playing all your life, and you just try to play the notes in a different way so they're not the same. So, like, this particular one was the diminished with the F sharp, like that, with the natural 13, and then the one with the harmonic, if you're starting a D harmonic minor, starting on A, 
you've got this to the B flat, and you get this, this thing here, like that. And that one's this scale, which is cool. Great sound. Can you play this A7? Yes. No, this is going to be the one. With, this is, I should put this voicing here, so if I see this, I'd be 10 more to play that scale. Uh, uh, wait a minute. No, flat 13. Excuse me, folks. Flat 13. No, it'll be like the same thing that like you would have G, C sharp, F, and B flat. That's it. I'm just like... You see, like improvisation, I mean, I, I'm just going to da 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 bo da bo da bo da So you can do a lot of things, you know, playing a... Playing like bebop is like a lot of notes in there, you know, playing this on the scales. So when, when you're improvising and you have these chord symbols like this, do you just isolate uh, each chord symbol for the, for the measure? Uh, well, in this case, with this, I would know this is a 2-5, and I would right. feel like that. But, you know, when I'm playing the key of D here and I get over there, I'll, I'll, I'll be hearing the, the piano playing this dark chord, yeah. and I would alter those notes to, to, to make the, the, the tension or enhancement be more of the bluesy tension rather than the natural, okay. you know? Yeah. The natural nine, if I play the natural nine, it's a mixolydian scale, right? Mm -hmm. And then opposed to that one there, you got that one and then that one. And then you got these, these intervals. The diminished scale is cool because it's got major seven intervals all over the place. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you got this, da da, and then, like this lick, ba da, A, G, um, C, D flat, C, B flat, this I, like. <laughs> type of song. You want to play um, a particular tune? Sure. Uh, standard? Uh, sure. Or should we talk more about this and put a bridge in there? Bridge. Bridge. Bridge it is. How about a bridge like something that's really kind of like totally different than the A section? So we got like it comes into the B flat. Oh, I, I took the, the tune away. Uh, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Hold on. Can we just... Can we need we, a magic whiteboard. Can we back it up a little bit? Okay. Yeah. Well, let's do... Uh, uh, one, can I do something? Ba, ba, ba. I'm going to just... Uh, ba, ba, da. Ba. Uh, can I have a... Can, can I have this note? Da. Ba, ba, da, da. No, this a, that's a yeah, and then an A, but a G. And then um, It's, uh, and then it goes to, that's four bars, right? Three, four. And then over here, then it goes to the B flat minor. Then, then G. Oh. Just, just a second. I get the that bridge. was a great improvisation. Thanks, man. It's a shame to watch that go oh, away. Oh, man. Thanks. <laughs> ba, da, ba. Da, ba. Ba, ba. Ba, ba. Ba, ba. Ba, ba. Ba da ba ba. This is the G7 all other side. Ba ba 
Ba ba ba do da do do ba 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 like that, and then da 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 da. Let's try that melody. All right, and then we'll do a bridge. One, two, three, four. A, 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 a seven sus to the, no, leave the third out. It's like, it'd be A, D, E, G. Seven altered. That's the, the, they gotta have the B in there. B natural. Yeah. No, the B flat on the top. B on the bottom, like B. Yeah. Two, three. No, you're rushing that. This is the whole bar of G, G altered. Okay. There's no anticipation on the C minor now. It's on one. Okay. okay. One, two, three. No. Let me see. You were right. This, this chord is this F7 though, right? F7? F7 flat 9? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Alright, that's good. One, two, and the B flat. Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's the A section. The, the bridge, let's just do the bridge. Any ideas? Anyone? We're here. So, in this particular tune, this is simple, it's, a, it's like a, a, a 32 bar tune when you have A, A. So the form of the tune we put up here, A, A, B, A. So the bridge would be B, of course, and then not for bridge, but just rehearsal letters. So I want to think of something here. Da, 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 da. Um, can, I, can I just hear a chord after the B flat minor 7? Maybe how about F major 7? Okay, B flat minor 9. And then F major. Well, that will work, I guess. They say anything can follow a one chord. So if you put one chord down, you know, you got to just follow it out. And everything follows, but you have to, you know. Yeah. So you can start anywhere. Major, minor. Yeah. Uh, I'll say F major 7. We're going to make the bridge. You're doing an eight-bar bridge? Yeah. Okay. Just, I'm going to do, do a Latin vamp. Bridge is going to be Latin, like that. Let's see. Um, I see. Ba 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 do da, be bo di ba do da, be bo de be bo be do, be be do be do ba 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 do be do da 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 ba. How about that lick? Can I hear that? One, two, three. Mm. Yeah, that's right. What? Yeah. Yeah. Again. We'll make that repeat twice. One, two, three, four. Okay, I'm just going to change. I'm gonna, yeah, that's a good chord. Hold that. Hold that chord. Yeah. Okay. So this this bar here, um, I like to like if I I'll write it out longhand. I was gonna do a shorthand and go like this, but it's uh, like this, like this, like that, uh -huh. and then go um, like that. But that's like kind of confusing. Yeah. I wanted to have this go. Uh, da da da. da. And then, instead of having the B flat, 
go to the, I was going to here, the D, like that. So that would be F again, F major seven to E flat major seven. Now, what was the chord you played here? I went to D with uh, major seven. Yeah. Okay. That would be good. Um. Uh, <laughs> oh, you were. Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> can I hear? Uh, can I hear E flat major seven again? Yes. Now E major seven. F minor seven, no, A minor seven, right here, tritone, from E flat, ma e flat major. It's gonna be. Can I sit there a minute? I'm gonna fit the last four bars and see if I can find it. This is the, oh, so the bridge is like F major. No, I don't like that. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. So that would be this. I, I, I think this works pretty good. I used that root thing with the dominant to the minor. So mm -hmm. I think what I did was I start A major, I went to A major 7 here, A major 7, the G major 7, then I went to A major 7 to. Um, um, Da -de -do -da -de -do -ba -de to A7 flat 9 and 13 back to the top of the uh, of there so so this is going to imitate this I need a I need a motif um, uh, ba I mean I can do I'll shape a different melody so it's like ba -da. yeah this is like a ba uh, be, be, I mean, just for example, I do 13 to sharp 11, just for just see what it sounds like. I'm gonna always change it. Um, oh, right there. Uh, um, see, G sharp, G sharp, da da, da da, da da. And then G natural, it's like this. This is like a courtesy C natural, so I, I, I know what it is, so I will put it like that. This, this, this would be a Latin section. So this melody, this goes from the A major 7, 1, 2, 3. G major seven? Oh, you're G major seven. No, no, it's not. It's not, it's not a major. It's A major seven, and then G major, and then G. Oh, yeah. That's it. There yeah. you go. One, two, three. Ah, uh, oh, wait, did you play this A major seven to A seven? It's gotta be, yeah, it's gotta be that chord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A major seven to that chord. behind but that's okay I'm just saying that because we could try it again we have time pretty close yeah we're heading into the, like the uh, final 15 here well any should we just do the the last day again or the bridge the whole bridge let's do the bridge oh, I would say let's do from the bridge to the last day okay. yeah okay. one two three four <laughs> I was 
here. Yeah. Almost. Almost made it. Oh, he almost. You almost made it. You were, you were chasing him. That's all right. <laughs> Should we try? Well, the, the other thing is, uh, everyone, Baba doo da. It's got to have something. You know, it's not really right. I don't like this. This I would change. I would, I would maybe imitate the same thing. Um, I do. I maybe go th uh, five to a, to the ninth. Want to try that? Sure. These, these two bars. Sure. No, from A major seven. One, two, three. I don't know about this chord. Just this measure here. That's it. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Okay. Nice. Yeah, so it, now the ending. Ending uh, a big short coda, last time only, LTO. So this got to be, this is a review of the first. I'm hearing this. You might have run And then fine. Let's try that. So from here to there, uh, there's the last three bars. How about voice? Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> no. If you voice it like the Miles thing I'll show you, F B E. It's like actually a D minus six nine. It's an F B E A D. Yeah, yeah. Okay. With a D in the bass though. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So after you hit the chord, because you have you the, if you hit the chord, then hit the bass because you can't do it. All the yeah, that's it. So let's go from uh, where are we here. No, no, what, what am I talking about? The, the last four bars of the tune. And then one, two, three. No, no, the B flat minor seven. One, two, three. It wasn't definite enough. C minor, F7, B flat, one, and then D minor. One, two, three. Yeah, here you go. Pretty. Yeah, that works. Pretty. Thank you. Different stuff, it. you know. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, man. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Yeah. Austin Coffee on piano, everybody. Good job, Austin. Yeah, man. All right. Hey, Austin. Austin, thanks, man. That's good. good. Nice job. Good. So yeah. we have about ten minutes left. So you know that, that's incredible to witness. Thank you for your creativity oh, and the beautiful welcome. melodic writing. And and you know again to bring it back to the composition and the construction of music with a jazz you know feeling or mood. Um, does anybody have any questions <coughs> about how he did that? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm just thinking and applying and, and changing because I'm, I'm trying out different sounds because I have a choice of all those chords, right? I can pick and choose any one I want and I can change it. So I'm experimenting and I say, yeah, that looks good. Uh, that sounds good, I mean. And there's been times where I, I was trying to find a chord that I, I saw a sound in my head in tunes I've written and, I, and I'm going and I said, I'm hearing something but I don't know how to, how to tell someone else to play it. What chord am I going to write or designate or voice? And then some, someday it just, it, just, it just comes to me, and I say, oh, that's it. You know, I was doing this thing the other day with one tune. I was going, I was going C major 7 in a waltz, the last two bars to F minor, and I was trying to find a thing, and I went like this, and I, I just was like this. I should have, oh, I've got the tune with me. It's in here. Oh? I, I could, are you going to grab it out? Sure. Do we have time? Yeah, we got 10 minutes. 
<clears throat> Good. Let's see. There you go. Thanks, man. All right. Yeah. These are all the tunes I had recorded last last week. Um, oh, this is the cool. It's a tune I called um, "Hazy Moon." Yeah. It's like a just a. It's a waltz, but the changes I can't. This is the one here. Um, yeah. You got it. You got it. Maybe you can play this. This chord. That was C major seven for two bars, and I went to here. But I, I was thinking, I mean, this is not a big discovery here, but I, I was gonna put C seven, but instead I used F sharp seven flat nine, so C major, like that type of thing, you know. Instead of this, I went. To, do you want to play this? Oh, I'm, I'm standing out of my, my area here. <laughs> you can right. find your mark. Right. You want to try it? Uh, yeah, we'd love to try it. Can one, you step back two, on the mic a little bit? One, two, oh, yeah. There you go. Just get one, right near that thing. One, two, three, two, two, three. Yeah, it's three, four. One, okay. One, two, three, two, two. Mm. Anyway, it's going to take you a while to get those changes. Yeah. But anyway, I took that tune off to show you that chord, but it wasn't really that, that important, yeah. really. So... If I play in a tune, like any 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 request for a bop tune or anything, I could play something. Or any questions? Anybody? Autumn leaves. Yeah. You gonna play this one? You know the chords better than I do. Uh, oh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what key? Um. Let me see. Okay, that's like that's like the A minor. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, ready? One, two. <laughs> oh, it's it started off good. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. Let me just try it. Okay, you got it. Good try. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, Good try. Uh, any? Should I play something? Or? Um, well, maybe we can uh, finish up with that. Uh, we're coming up on five, right? Mm -hmm. How are we doing on time? Like four minutes to go? Yeah. Okay. You want to finish up with a little uh, solo improvisation? Yeah. Well, how that. about you guys? What do you guys want to hear? Any more questions about harmony or jazz writing? Mm, I do have a question about Okay. Just to capitalize on the when on the you learning. Said you were in the beginning, you were talking about writing four different four different Yeah, yeah. Or five. How, yeah, how would you do that? How do you well it's like you harmonize down from the from the from the first note of the melody and then you would like use the harmony like as far as you gotta have some low interval limits, you gotta watch that. So Sometimes you double the lead to make it, depends how many horns for the sax section. Like this, this B7 would be D sharp, then you would have, or you'd be going to the bass clef here, it's like, that you would have the next note, would, would be the next note down on the chord. No, this here would be the third, right? Then you want, there'd be the one. So you say it would be like B, and then A, and then F sharp. So it would be like, and then, and then the, uh, the, t the baritone would double the uh, lead of the, uh, 
the uh, alto. So you got this this harmony. Could you play this chord, Austin? Just play the E flat, E flat, B. No, B natural. Yeah, that's right. A, F sharp, E flat. That would be the four, five saxophones. So now you figure, all these notes, right, have the five the harmonies going down in the in that that order. It's, a, it's also called four-way close voicings, but sometimes you substitute the nine when the one comes up to give tension. Like in other words, this one here, this this note here, instead of that B, I could have put I would put the C sharp there. But can you play this voicing? Yeah. Yeah. Get that. So the place you start when doing that is to basically, you know, spell out the chord and spread it out among the instruments that you're writing for. Yeah, man. You start off with close, yeah, just to get all the notes covered, and then you can go through it again and start thinking about, oh, maybe I can open the voicing here on this part, you know, yeah. what I mean? and make take one note and transpose it up an octave, maybe. I mean, there's a few rules that you have to follow there, but in general, to answer your question, that's how you start. Yeah. Good. It's all about identifying the notes in the chord and you know keeping them in there. That's right. Could you possibly um, I mean, harmonize the first measure? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what what chord are we going to use here? You know, we use the E minor. That was the one we used, right? No, we used the D major seven. Oh, we used seven. Oh, is that what you were playing? Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Okay. D, uh, so it's D major seven. Okay. So we put the F sharp here, right? This is the the, the tenors. Then I would put the first tenor here, and then I put the uh, second tenor here, and then I put the barry here, and then this would be like I'm giving the barry this note here now, then the E. This would be a repeated note here, a repeated note, B. repeated note. It, look, it sounds better than it looks. <laughs> well, that's what counts. Yeah. That's what I say when I go on stage some places I don't know where I get the new audience. Like, and, I, and I've been traveling all day, and I go in there, and, uh, and I walk on the stage, and then the trio's there with And I say, don't worry, folks. I sound better than I look. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. They laugh. The ink, the ink, you know, it's, I don't know. That's it's, good. Um, that's so in this this five vo that's a five note voicing you're doing there? Yeah, because, yeah. oh yeah, I'm using the double, uh, double lead on the, uh, no, I'm doing the baritone. I'm, no, I'm doubling the baritone with the alto. Right. So five saxophones, kind of standard jazz, big band configuration is two alto sax, two tenor sax, and one baritone sax. Yeah. And the tenors, now, now for example, uh, before I go, I'll just do this. Now, if I'm transposing the altos, the altos would look like this on their paper. They'd have an F sharp here, first alto. The second alto would have a D sharp. Okay. Now the tenors, this E, you don't you don't put it here. This this E would not go here on, on the bottom. This F sharp would go here because you're up a second. Now see this this note to make that note sound on the piano. Can I hear that E, Austin? Yeah. To get that. The tenor has to play it up here, an, an octave and a ninth, so he transposes to a, a, an octave and a ninth. That's right. So it's, to sound here, he's got to play up an octave. And then the other tenor would be here, up uh, right there. And then the baritone, would I have to just do separately, uh, this is the baritone here, would be F sharp. So he'd have the, uh, an, F, uh, an F sharp in this A line. Oh, treble clef, I'm sorry. Treble clef. Because he's yeah. transposed. So that's why you guys, when you start the writing, do the writing in concert, just regular pitch, get the voicing, get the sound you want, and then step number two, transpose for whatever instruments you're writing for, in this case, alto sax and tenor sax and baritone sax, which is also an E flat instrument, yeah. but an octave lower. Hey, is the, is the bass sax in, in B flat? You know? Yes. It okay, is. I was bass right. Bass sax is in B flat. And then the contrabass sax is in E flat. Oh my gosh, contrabass. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it keeps going. So. 
um, th this is the beauty of software like Sibelius, right? Because in Sibelius, you can write it in concert, get it the, vo the sound you want, and then it'll kind of automatically make that Thank transposition you. for you if you say that this note goes to an E flat alto sax, it knows what to do. And it'll make that transposition. Yeah, it for does you. it automatically, doesn't it's it? It's pretty cool, yeah, but it's good. That you guys need to do it on paper so you can check it. <laughs> so yeah. you've got to be sure to do it. Any other questions? It's hard two hours to talk about jazz. Uh, can you believe it? I know. Two, how fast yeah. does that go? Yeah. Pretty fast. Pretty fast. Well, this has been absolutely incredible. Well, and thank you. What incredible creativity and, and depth of knowledge. And uh, let's give a hand to Greg Abate. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks very much.